right, so my name is John Spangler. I'm here to talk about value stream mapping and analysis at under four bits a second, hopefully. Um, the slides are available through my uh, blog, unifyingit.net, and probably through the conference here as well. I've been a technologist now for 22 years, starting off in manufacturing, thus my interest in uh, background in Lean Six Sigma. I'm currently an ITSM pro process architect at DaVita. If you're interested, you can follow me via my uh, Twitter account or uh, my blog that I, I mentioned earlier. So, At DevOps conferences, we hear a lot about value streams, um, but what exactly is it and how can we use it to improve our delivery pipeline? So value stream mapping is a lean technique for optimizing your, va uh, your, your value stream, your end-to-end -end process flow. Here's a picture of a complete uh, value stream map. We'll go through each uh, component through this presentation. Let's start with vocabulary. End-to-end -end means from the customer's viewpoint, so we optimize the entire flow. In agile delivery, it could be product backlog to deployed, or it could be order to cache, for example. Next are process activities, which are like high-level flowchart items. Um, queues are the items waiting for work to be done in them, are regarded as non-value add time. So, work in progress, I'll catch up with my slides here, or just let my slides catch up with me. So work in progress uh, are items in the queue waiting for things to be, wor to be worked on while processing time is the value add time or something that the customer would actually pay us for doing. And then lead time is the total process time plus the non-value add time, like waiting in queues. So, so too often we, sp we focus on what we, what we are doing and how to improve that, but the biggest opportunity is really what aren't we working on? What things, what valuable things are sitting in a queue waiting to be worked upon? So reducing queues is by far our biggest opportunity to increase our velocity. So where do we traditionally see these improvements? For large enterprises, it's reducing uh, whips and queues. For agile development teams, it's establishing lean flow with operations. And for DevOps groups, it's decreasing your cycle time. So where we traditionally see these improvements, or I'm sorry, <laughs> so, um, so it's about focusing on the biggest process bottleneck. Theory of constraints tells us that just one area constrains our overall flow here, just like the funnels here on this uh, diagram. DevOps focuses on continuous integration and deployment, uh, and that word continuous really means lean flow through your delivery pipeline. Let's look at our, our, our map and our process uh, activities here. They're typically three to eight items in a, in a, a, a value map. Uh, these are activities are determined by, often determined by your current data sources, and that's okay, we can always improve our data collection later if needed. Queues are represented by the yellow triangles with the number in the center, the number of items that are in that queue. Uh, value stream uh, mapping is a point in time tool, so either pick a date uh, for your data or grab an average or median over a date. Uh, over a period of time. So for the same time period, add your non-value add and your value add data. Often value add time is initially, not initially captured by your organization. So if this is the case, consult the team performing the activity for an estimate. Um, the 100, 100, 100 items in 90 days on the left-hand side show good agile practice. This is exactly where we want our large queues because uh, we maximize agility. If we clog up the pipeline with WIP, we just end up slowing everything down and it makes it uh, hard to expedite items. The monthly deployment uh, window on the far right is the bottleneck here with the large whip and queue time. As such, improving any activity before that is just gonna stack up work at that bottleneck. Um, if we want to improve our delivery speed, we really need have to address that deployment bottleneck first. The efficiency metrics here show value add versus non-value add time. The 16% indicates we have a big gap with our customer demand rate, and 63% shows that we have a lot of opportunities to improve our work and process flow. Uh, so, so to recap, it's always the customer's view of end to end. You should identify an improved flow at the bottleneck, never flood or starve the bottleneck, and tolerate any flow and inefficiencies outside the bottleneck. Smaller batches are generally better if they don't starve the bottleneck. And for DevOps teams, don't forget to look at your retirement cycle times because that's going to affect your next iteration. Um, finally, uh, use a tool called a cumulative flow diagram to monitor your flow over time. So five minutes really isn't enough time to learn value stream management, but this is a good overview. I highly recommend the book Value Stream Mapping by Karen Martin. Uh, and then there's also another book called Learning to See. It's written more in a manufacturing context, but it's a little bit easier to digest. So no matter if you're looking to increase your deploys per quarter, month, or day, uh, your checklist is here to improve your velocity. Like a race car, it doesn't matter how much horsepower you have when your foot's on the brake. It's gotta be on that throttle to actually deliver value. So finally, remember that value stream ma mapping is just a tool, it's not the solution. And these resources I have listed here might be helpful with addressing some of those challenges that you're facing. Uh, you can find me at JWS Pro Services on Twitter, unifyingit.net for my blog. Uh, also announced that DaVita is hiring. 
Uh, and lastly, dimming rules. <laughs>